Hello, everyone. I'm Miriam Guan from KAIST. My advisor is Myung Soo Jung, who leads Computer Architecture and Memory System Laboratory. Today, I'll talk about our work, which is this is for eliminating noise neighbor containers using deterministic IO performance and resource isolation. This work is technically supported by and collaborate with Samsung. Before I move on to the main talk, I'll give a high level summary of the talk. The motivation of this work is that when sharing storage device in a multi-container environment, the write intensive container is a noisy neighbor of read intensive container. That is, to eliminate the noisy neighbor container, we physically separate the IO paths of a single SSD and provide the isolated storage volume to containers. And we name this hardware level design as divided SSD. Divide SSD can eliminate the foreground noise sound, which is a write operation issued by the application. But how about the background noise sound, which is a write operation issued by operating system? This is uncovered noise sound, and it cannot be served by the divide SSD. Therefore, we pin the IO destination of OS metadata per container and it allows us to isolate the background noise sound from the container, and we name this system level support as IOTECR. This is store is both hardware level support and system level support. The hardware level solution, divide SSD, can eliminate the foreground noise sound, while the system level support, IOTECR, can eliminate the background noise sound. Then now, let's move on to the main talk. And firstly, let's go over how multi-container scenario looks like. In this work, we use Facebook scenario as a representative example of multi-container. The Facebook scenario can be summarized as interspersing varsity writes into such and reads, which is introduced in the flash memory submit 2018. And the goal of storage sharing of Facebook scenario is service the read operation as fast as possible without impact of write operation. To make the face, Facebook scenario easier to understand, let's consider a read intensive container which frequently read the contents of storage device as a music listener, and a write intensive container which frequently write the contents of storage device as a singers. Then the goal of street sharing could be thing like, let music listener can enjoy the music in a quiet environment. A solution for sharing a single space with two people is to divide a single space into two logically separate rooms. Therefore, we can be used as a room for listening to music and another for a singing a song. So let's test the soundproofing of the logically separate room. For this test, one music listener and three singer were assigned to the single storage device. And we will check how quietly container A can enjoy the music. Let's analyze the user experience of the container A who is listening to music. The user experience will be explored through the time series analysis. In the graph on the right, the x-axis is a time, and the y-axis is a read latency, which is a metric of how quietly container A can enjoy the music. We add a single person into next, next logically separate room for every 30 seconds. When container A listened to music alone, it was really quiet. But as the number of singing, per, singing persons gradually increased, we could see that the noise sound is too much. In other words, even if we divide a single space into multiple logically separate rooms, listening to music is significantly impacted by the singing a song. The main cause of noise sound is that logically separate volumes only separate the NAND flash media and it share all of the hardware resources in the storage from IO queues to the NAND flash channels. There is a write operation could be noise sound to the read operation. To eliminate the noise neighbor, we propose a hardware level solution named Divide SSD. From now on, let's go over how divided SSD works. The main idea is do not share any hardware resources in the IO path. 
that is, the internal resources of storage device, are physically divided into several groups, and the unit is named MBIM set. In order to check if a divided SSD really works, we implemented a hardware prototype, and our prototype consists of four MBM sets as an example, and the number of MBM sets could be varying. Let's see how the coder recognize the implemented hardware prototype. With the divided SSD prototype, we can see four separate MBM sets, and each MBM set has its own firmware. So let's test the sound proofing again, but in this time we use physically separate room of divided SSD. And we evaluated divided SSD with both a synthetic application, which is a FIO, and real application, which is LAMP stack. In the synthetic application test, we observed that although the number of write containers increased, there is no performance impact of read container. In other words, divide SSD where isolates the noise sound. Next, for a better evaluation, we also tested divide SSD with database, which is a very known as a write intensive application. Moreover, in the containerized system, they use first stack of database, which is a LAMP, Linux plus Nginx plus MySQL plus PHP. As a benchmark, we select TPCC. Then the whole procedure of LAMP stack is TPCC send the HTTP request to the web server, and Nginx transfer the request via JSON file, and PHP finally requests a DB query to the MySQL. As a positive way of query requesting, MySQL responds to PHP, and then Rizor is finally reached to the host side. At this time, we evaluated the input and output patterns of the room where container A is listening to music. We test two scenarios. One is listening to music alone, and another is put three singing people in the next room. In the case of three more singing people, we observed that unexpected noise sound. Let me explain the cause of unexpected noise sound from now on. Limitation of the conventional noise sound is we only consider the foreground noise sound, which is generated by the application. However, there is another type of noise sound, which is a background noise sound, and it is issued by the operating system in background. Therefore, we define the noise sound as foreground right operation plus background right operation. The representative example of background noise sound is page frame reclaiming. And OS generates the container's metadata I.O. in background without intervention of container. Note that OS level virtualization shared a host OS, and in the Linux system, page frame reclaiming is managed in the same manner for normal process in container. Let's check how page frame reclaiming works in the Linux system. I'll explain with the our divide SSD. In the Linux system, there is a single swap area in general. And all page frame reclaiming is handled in the swap area regardless general process or containers. In other words, page frame reclaiming generates another type of noise sound and divide SSD cannot solve this problem. What if we use multiple swap area in the divide SSD? When there is multiple swap area in the Linux system, Linux use them in round robin fashion. Therefore, if you use the multiple swap area, although we can reduce the burden of OS metadata IO compared to the single swap area, still there is noisy sound. So we can eliminate the OS invoked noise sound by pinning the metadata destination per container in a system level. Let's check the details of proposed system level support. To eliminate the noise of background write operation, IOTacker mainly provides three system level support. First, the shareable pinnable property of soil area. Second, 
that occurs container creation with shop area pinning information. At last, pin the information aware page frame reclaiming. Let's go over the details from the first support, which is shareable, pinnable, sub-area property. The main objective of this support is informing the corner that the swap area is not shared by the entire process or containers, but it can be assigned to certain containers. And this support can, can be done by three steps. First, we define a new swap area flag. Each swap area has a data structure named swap info struct, which has a flex field in it. Types of flex include area property, priority, and options for discarding data in the swap area. And we added the pinnable flag to represent the swap area pinnable attribute. Second step is to create a swap area with the make swap comment. It allocates a new entry in swap info, which is a data structure that manages the entire swap area in the system. The entry of swap info is swap info struct, which consists of information about the swap area. Finally, we need to activate the created swap area. At this time, the flag value of swap info struct is changed by passing the pinnable hint to the swap on system call. Then let's move on to the second support, which is container creation with metadata pinning information. Firstly, I'll explain how container data structure in Linux system looks like. Con container mainly isolated from other process with namespace. There is a container's PID can start from one. And the task struct, which is a container's data structure includes hardware resource control group information called C groups. The C group file descriptor points the C group data structure which include CPU, memory, and block device resource control information. For example, memory C group includes swamness information and maximum capacity the container can use. And Linux exposes the control group information to the user space as a file and the secret file system is mounted, then its container has its own directory. Then its hardware resource, such as CPU, memory, and block device also has its own directory. Below the directory, there are details of its hardware resource control information, and we call this as control group setting file. The benefits of file system support is when we perform the file write into the control group setting file in user space, corner will update its data structure value in the corner space. In order to support per container metadata pinning, we define new control group setting file. The main objective of this support is informing corner that container's metadata I.O. should be put into the shared sub area or certain sub area. As the swap-related information is defined in the memory C group previously, we add the swap-area pinning information into the memory C group as well. Then, like other C group setting parameter, pinning information can be set as file format. In this slide, let me explain how a container can be created. Container management platform, such as Docker, helps OS level virtualization can be adopted to user quickly. Docker provides simple API to programmers to make them easy to create or delete container or execute any application within the container. Let's check the example of Docker usage in this slide. As shown in the slide, we can send the Docker command via the terminal. So when we type Docker create command, OS creates container. Then when we type Docker execute command, OS lets container can execute computation in it. At last, when we type the Docker remove command, OS destroys the container and deletes all container related data. For more details, when Docker client send Docker create command via Docker stack, container engine invokes system calls to create container related corner data structure. In this slide, I will explain how it works. 
when user tries to create container. Container engine calls clone function with process isolation flag, then namespace and cgroup data structure is allocated for container. Then container engine invokes the file write system call to update the hardware resource control information, which is passed via Docker creation parameters. As an example, we showed how newly added memory pinning information can be updated. Then what about the upper Docker stack? In this slide, I will explain how the swap area pinning information is passed through the Docker stack. The main objective of this support is let user can easily set the metadata pinning information by leveraging the conventional Docker API. When user type the container creation command via terminal, the MVM set information firstly is stored in the container config data structure of Docker client. And Docker client and Docker engine communicate over HTTP, and the HTTP communication parameter are sent in the form of a JSON file. Those we add the MVM set information into the JSON file and send it to the Docker engine. Then Docker engine puts the information into your host config data structure. Docker engine communicates with container engine through the Google remote procedure call. So pin the information is sent through the Google RPC request. Then container engine put the information into its config data structure. And after that, container engine performed the system call to create the container container related corner data structure like what I explained in the previous slide. At last, let me explain how Linux corner used the pinned information at long time. In this slide, I'll explain the procedure of page frame reclaiming. The procedure of page, page frame reclaiming can be divided into three steps. The first step is to add victim page to the swap cache. It always selects the victim page from the allocated page frame. And they put the page table entry of the victim page into the swap cache. Swap cache is a PT list of victim pages in a special case of page cache. In the second step, we assign a swap slot to the victim page. Swap area is managed in units of swap slots. And whether or not a swap slot is allocated can be known through the swap map information. And the way to select the target swap area is to search swap info, which is a data structure that manages the swap area of the entire system. And if there is a multiple swap area, you will use a round robin fashion to select the swap area. Once the swap area is determined, the swap map field can be accessed from the swap info structure and a free swap slot can be allocated to the victim page. The destination of swap slot will be stored in the swap cache in a format of swap entry data structure by overriding the swap cache, which was a page table entry of page A. The last step is to write a victim page into the swap slot. Like a dirty page, the victim page will be right back to the SSD at some point. And this is a background noise sound. In this slide, I'll explain which corner part is modified to support the pinned information over page frame reclaiming. The main objective of this support is let corner can support both shared space metadata I.O. and pinned space metadata I.O. This support is based on containers memory pinned information which is stored when container is created. The key idea behind modifying the corner is to let the corner know the owner container of the victim page. And the metadata destination of the container when the victim page is selected at one time. As the victim page's data structure includes page owner's secret information, so when the page, victim page is selected, Linux can refer its secret information and perform the metadata I.O. into the pinned area. At last, let me introduce the evaluation result of DC Store. 
we have both baseline and divide SSD, which have four logical partition and four MVM sets, respectively. The baseline and divide SSD have exactly the same hardware configuration. The total capacity is two terabyte, and totally it has eight channels. That is, each MVM set of divide SSD uses only two channels. Moreover, in order to provide system level support, we modified Linux kernel version 5.0.7, which has secret version one, and we also modified util Linux for swap on system call in Docker, which version is 18.9.7. In addition, let's redefine the application type with the redefined noise sound. There is data intensive container which frequently access to the device with read operation, while the compute-intensive compute container mainly performs the computation and rarely access the storage devices. In addition, a memory-hungry application is selected as a noise neighbor, which generates many background I.O. The rear application of each type was evaluated as follows. For data-intensive application, we selected grab, word count, and min max. And for the compute intensive application, we select sort. Lastly, for a memory hungry application, we prepare the LAMP, which is a full stack of database. To compare and evaluate the baseline and DC store, we launched two containers. One was tested with the data intensive or compute intensive, and the other with a memory hungry application that generates a lot of metadata I.O. And baseline SSD uses single swap area, while the DC store uses pin swap area, which is supported by IOTECR. First of all, we measure the over execution time of application. Compared to baseline, DC store shows much shorter execution time. This is because the DC store eliminates both foreground noise sound and background noise sound. And there is a performance improvement even in the case of compute-intensive compute application. Second, let's analyze the evaluation in the time series perspective. In the right figure, the x-axis is a time, and the y-axis is a IO latency. In addition, the gray-colored graph shows the noisy neighbor behavior. As you, guess, as you can see from the figure, Baseline is heavily influenced by noisy neighbors, while this store showed a consistent performance over time regardless of the noisy neighbor. Again, this store does not impact it by any noisy neighbor. Not only for the overall performance of this store, we test IOTECR with three test scenarios. First, deferred means the Defer means the general single sub area of Linux system. Second, the round robin means the multiple sub area of Linux system, and they will be used in round robin fashion. Last, private means our proposed IO taker swap area pinning method. Let's check three different sub area uses method in execution time viewpoint. While private method shows short execution time, Deferred experience much longer execution time compared to private due to the many IO conflicts of background write operation. And although round robin can spread the burden of single sub area into multiples, we cannot eliminate all of the IO conflict from background write. To sum up, the write private, which is supported by IO Tecker, is much faster than deferred and round robin due to remove noise. IO metadata IO. Let's analyze the evaluation in the time series perspective. And the gray color graph and orange color graph shows a noisy neighbor behavior. Like previous sli slide, the first shows significant impact of noisy neighbor, and ROM roving fashion is better than deferred, but still there is IO interference of noisy neighbor. But IO but our IOTECR method do not experience any noise sound from neighbor containers. Let me close today with 
talk with a single slide. This is to successfully eliminate the noise IO request, both foreground noise sound and background noise sound, and improves the performance of other read-intensive containers. The hardware level solution, Divide SSD, provides storage sharing and isolation, so it can be used in other noise neighbor scenarios as well. And the system level support, IO Tecker, is pinning the storage location of OS metadata IO, so it can be used in other background noise sounds as well. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, then please let me know. from future we hear that um, your experiment is uh, is done on the divided SSDs. Do you think that you can get the same performance or isolation on the logically partitioned SSDs? And if that's possible, then what are the steps? Uh, the evaluation measure of over performance or IOTECR? And the IOTECR is about the swap area. Yes. And using divided SSD is okay, but that divided capacity into four different regions that is, may not be desirable. Because if I want SSD, I don't want four individual SSDs. I want something that I can share. Right? In the case that I'm sharing capacity, do you think that by dividing the queues or priority the queues or oh. time sharing the, the accesses on the NVMe queue level, yeah. then maybe that's possible? Yeah, I got your point. Uh, actually, the design goal of our divide SSD is for noisy neighbor. When we want to split it, the IO pass within a single device. So I think the divide SSD target is a little bit different with what you explained. Good work, thank you. Jerry from Future Way. And uh, the question is that uh, uh, besides the swap area separation for the background uh, uh, traffic, have you considered, uh, have you observed anything through the SSD internal traffic, including the wire leveling and the GC? Uh, yeah, we can think. Uh, we can consider the SSD internal traffic if I can control the SSD controller, but actually I couldn't, I use a real device, real hardware device, and I didn't use a simulator, so I think I cannot test with the SSD internal traffic. Okay, well let's thank our speaker one more time. Mm -hmm.